Hello and welcome to the lecture, Digital Euro of Commercial Banks, Issuance and Use Cases. I am very happy that you joined us for this lecture today. We are covering an exciting topic. We will go through an agenda of six chapters in total. And in this one, we will start out with an introduction into tokenization, just because creating a digital euro is essentially the process of tokenization. After that, we will go into why we actually need a digital euro, um, what is the process of issuing a digital euro, some legal aspects, then how does the custody of digital euros work, and we will conclude in the sixth chapter with use cases and case studies. And you can watch each of these videos independently. Now, starting with the introduction, I'm Radoslav Albrecht. I'm the founder and CEO of Bitbond. And at Bitbond, we like to think of ourselves as pioneers in the tokenization space. The reason for that is in the year 2019, Bitbond has been in the fortunate situation to become the first issuer of a security token offering in Germany. We conducted a tokenized bond offering, um, the BB1 token, and we were the first company to receive approval by the German financial regulator BaFin for our tokenized securities prospectus, where we completely dematerialized a security. And with that, we gained a lot of firsthand experience in the regulated tokenization space. And we worked together with a lot of banks, asset managers, and other financial intermediaries who, on the one hand, work with our uh, tokenization technology as a white label solution, and also use our tokenization technology in order to issue digital euros. So we have first-hand experience in working together with banks who become digital euro issuers with our technology, and therefore we have a perspective on this commercial bank aspect. Now, what is so exciting about tokenization in, in general and why do banks and uh, other financial intermediaries actually get excited about the topic? Well, I like to compare tokenization with email and conventional letters. When people were sending conventional letters, these letters had to be distributed physically from one location to the other. And the longer the distance, the more difficult and the more expensive um, it is to actually deliver the letter. And when we switch to email, then we remove the intermediary of the postal service. And we don't really care anymore whether the recipient of our message is in the same room or in the same country. We don't really care what kind of devices they use. We all agree that we're using the SMTP email protocol in order to transfer messages. And all I need is the email address of the other person. And I know that my message when I send an email will be delivered instantaneously all around the globe, independently of what hardware or software my recipient is using. Now, when we look into the world of financial assets and uh, securities in particular, then today, in most cases, securities are still assumed to be represented by a paper certificate. Even though we can trade electronic securities and we don't really see the paper in the process anymore, when you look at the way how securities are being processed and they transfer from one owner to the other, then the underlying concept still resembles as if there was an actual physical paper certificate somewhere. Now, when we tokenize these securities, which means when we represent the ownership in a security through a fully digital token, then we remove this physical aspect. And in that process, we also remove a number of intermediaries. And this is what we can see in the slide. On the left-hand part of the slide, we see the transfer of a security from investor to issuer in a conventional way. And we need to involve at least three intermediaries. We need the investor bank, which will hold the securities account for the investor. We will need the central securities depository, which physically holds the security. And we need a payment agent um, that settles the payments between investor and issuer. And now when an investor makes a payment to the issuer and the issuer 
um, triggers the issuance of the security and the delivery of the security. And this process will take at least T plus two settlement days, so at least two business days. Um, with some types of assets, this can be even longer. So on the one hand, we have a process that takes a certain amount of time and also incurs a certain level of costs because obviously these intermediaries need to get paid. Now, when we look at the same process in the tokenized scenario, an issuer can transfer a security to the investor independently of any other third party. So there can be a transfer from the wallet of the issuer to the investor, and we don't need these intermediaries. And when we bring the payment side onto the chain as well, which will be the core part of this lecture, then we can create a so-called instant delivery versus payment mechanism. We can settle at T plus zero, and this has a number of advantages coming with it. First of all, we remove settlement and counterparty risk. When you have a T plus two or T plus X settlement, then when one side has already delivered, for example, the payment, then they wait for the delivery of the security, and it could happen that during this time, the counterparty goes bankrupt and the delivery actually never happens. And in such a case, this risk needs to be accounted for. And in some transactions, banks even have to put up regulatory capital for this transaction. And regulatory capital, of course, is very expensive. So if you can reduce the regulatory capital that you need for these transactions or even bring it to zero, then it can have a substantial cost saving. Then you don't need the central securities depository anymore. So this is another cost component where you can actually save money. And you reduce also the complexity of the transfer, especially when we look at cross-border international securities transfers. When you have a transfer that happens within a region where the same CSD applies, then the transfer is relatively straightforward. But once you go into an international setting where you have different CSDs that would need to interact with each other, the process can get really complex and can take several weeks. And ultimately, secondary market liquidity is one other motivation of tokenization because tokenization with its efficiency allows for smaller denominations of assets and therefore more investors can participate and this, in many instances, leads to a higher secondary market liquidity. Now, when you look at the tokenization process, um, from a technological perspective, you typically have three components or three pillars, as we call it. On the one hand, you need a custody solution. When you have a digital asset, someone somewhere needs to hold it. You could do self-custody, um, but you could also work with a third-party custodian. In any case, the technology and the infrastructure needs to be maintained. And this is one important aspect. Then the second aspect is the asset tokenization itself. So the creation of tokens that represent ownership in an asset. And they are stored in the custody solution. And then the third component is what we sometimes also call the stablecoin issuance. And this is exactly where the digital euro comes into place. When you want to settle a securities transaction of a tokenized security on chain, you need a digital payment method that ideally exists on the same chain where the token has been issued. And for that, you need to issue digital euros. And in order to issue these digital euros, you need an interface to the internal um, payment system of the bank, something that's also called an on and off ramp between the fiat euros and the digital euros. And so these three technological components, Bitbond as uh, an expert on, and we normally deliver all of these three components and these three pillars. And therefore, we are familiar with all components and we'll talk about one and the other component throughout the lecture. Thank you very much for listening to the first part, and I'm looking to see you in the second chapter.